going on, Discover Point? I hope you guys had a very Merry Christmas yesterday, and I wanted to say thank you so much for joining us for this very special online service. We are wrapping up this series on carols, and uh, we're so excited to have you guys joining us. And so over the last several weeks, uh, we've been going through some of your favorite carols, uh, some of the most popular ones. I encourage you to go back and and watch shows on demand. And uh, just like every week, we've been discussing some of the lyrics that we've heard in some of these carols. And um, today was O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And just before we get into the message, I want to give you a little history about this. Um, this song was actually written between the 8th and 12th century. So it's a very old song. And actually, during this era in church history, it was very uh, popular for for people to sing or chant phrases that started with the letter O, just like the one you heard in O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And what would happen is that they would sometimes either read a psalm or or sing or chant, and they would start these phrases with the letter O, and they were known as O antiphons, O antiphons. And one of these phrases is what birthed this line, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. That's what that word means. And it comes from Matthew 1, where in Matthew 1, verses 21 through 23, it says this, that she will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. He will save his people from from their sins. Now, all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. And just to kind of pause here, this very next part that we're going to read was actually prophesied 740 years before Jesus ever showed up onto the scene, before Jesus was ever born into our world. And so Isaiah prophesied this very next part in verse 23. It says this, See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. Everybody say that wherever you're tuning in. Say, God is with us. That's what that word Emmanuel means. How many guys have ever prayed, God be with me? I know I have. There's been several occasions in my life where I have prayed that prayer, God, be, please be with me. And here's what I want to do today. What does it mean for God to be with us? What does this mean, Emmanuel? Because this has huge implications. As a matter of fact, this is essentially what Christmas is all about, that God is with us. Now, here's what you need to understand. Whenever Matthew wrote these verses under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and was retelling the story of of how the angel pronounced that uh, the virgin would become pregnant and give birth to a son and they will name him Emmanuel, whenever whenever he wrote this down and whenever this angel proclaimed it, man, this was like earth-shattering news to anyone that was listening or reading these words because it was a proclamation that the God of the universe was coming down to be with us. And to the Jewish audience, this would have been earth-shattering news. Because up until this moment, God was very, God was holy. And, and, and not that he wasn't near his people, but his people couldn't really be in his presence. We know from the Old Testament that, that God dwelled in, in the Holy of Holies, and, and we've talked about this before, but that God would dwell in the Holy of Holies, and, and no one was allowed to enter into the Holy of Holies. His presence was so strong, and, and like sin could not even be in his presence. And so if, it, if a high priest who would enter into the Holy of Holies once a year, he would have to make sure that he was purified, 100% clean before he entered in because of God's presence. Otherwise, he would drop dead. Moses went up to, uh, up to the mountain and, and he asked God to show him his face. And God said that no one has ever seen his face, but he allowed his presence to go before Moses. And that was the closest that anyone had ever been to God and up until that point. And so when Matthew declared what Isaiah prophesied, that God would be with us, this had huge implications for every single person that would have read these words, that would have heard of this good news. And this was the good news that sent the shepherds rejoicing. 
It's what brought the wise men from all over the world to come and worship the king because they realized that God was here. John the Beloved said this in his gospel. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Who is the word? He's talking about Jesus. He says that in the beginning was the word, Jesus. So Jesus has always existed. See, some people think that Jesus, you know, that that his timeline started when he was born in a manger 2,000 years ago, but Jesus is eternal. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. He was there in the beginning. Jesus is eternal. Scripture says that all things were created by him and for him and through him. It goes on to say that he was with God in the beginning and the word became flesh and he dwelt among us. Just think about that. Jesus, the eternal one, who is the alpha and the omega, all things were created by him and for him and through him, came down from heaven to earth and he dwelled among us. The message translation says this, says the word became flesh and blood and moved into our neighborhood. See, this is the true essence of Christmas, that Jesus moved into our neighborhood. He became flesh. He became just like you and me. And this has some amazing implications. My prayer is that before you tune off today, that you would understand that God is with you. That God is not only with you, but that he was with you as you look back on your life and that you will also see that God will always be with you. And I want to unpack those three thoughts today that, number one, that God is with you. God is with you. When the angel declared to Mary, he said this, he said, greetings, favored woman, the Lord is is with you. And friends, this is such good news for you and me, that the Lord is with us. The incarnation is this reality that Jesus is with us forever, forever. And no matter what you're going through right now, I want you to know that the Lord is with you today. The Lord is with you. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our affliction. You know, that word uh, comfort means to come alongside. It's the word parakaleo. It means to come alongside of us. And so what that means, according to this verse, is that God is the God of all comfort. What does he do? He comes alongside of us in the middle of our afflictions. And there's some of us that are watching right now that maybe this is the first time that you are spending a holiday without a loved one. Or maybe, maybe it's been a couple years and every time the holidays come up, it reminds you that you've lost someone that you love. I want you to know that in this moment, God is with you. He is here to comfort you in the middle of your affliction. He's here to come alongside of you. If you're feeling alone today, I want you to know that God comes alongside of you like a companion. If you're feeling lost today, I want you to know that God is here with you as your guide. If you're feeling weak today, I want you to know that God is with you as your strength. If you're feeling sick today, I want you to know that God is with you as your healer. If you're feeling hopeless today, I want you to know that God is with you as your hope. If you're feeling like the worst sinner in the world, I want you to know that God is with you as your Savior. God is with you, friends. No matter where you're at, no matter what you've done, he is there with you. And sometimes it doesn't feel like he's there with us, especially if we're going through hard times, right? Sometimes it's easy to question, where is God? Sometimes it's easy to to forget his promises that he is always with us. You know, 
it reminds me of uh, a couple years ago, I took my family to Disney World, and um, my kids were a lot younger then. I think my daughter may have been in elementary, 11 or 12 years old. And there was a ride there at Disney World. Some of you guys have probably been on this ride. It's called the Tower of Terror. And um, if you've ever been on this ride, you know, it's, it's not that scary, but to an 11-year-old kid, it's scary, okay? And I remember this was the first time I had ever been on this ride, and so I'm thinking, yeah, I didn't know what to expect. My daughter's coming with me on this ride, and I come to find out that it might be a little bit scary, so I'm trying to ask the, the, you know, the, the, the employees there, hey, is this ride too scary for an 11-year-old? And they're like, oh, she'll be fine. It'll be, it'll be great. She'll enjoy it. It's, it's awesome. And so she's kind of freaking out, and I'm trying to calm her down. I'm like, hey, it's, it's cool. Don't worry. It'll be fine. They're, they say it's not scary at all. Well, we, we finally, after waiting in line for a long period of time, we finally get, into, uh, we finally get on, onto the ride. They strap us in. And all of a sudden, the lights go black, right? Everything's dark, and my daughter, like, holds on to me. She squeezes me, and I'm like, Grace, it's okay. It's okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm right here. I'm not going to leave you. And all of a sudden, like, the ride starts, and, man, it gets scary to an 11-year-old girl in that moment, and she is freaking out. She's freaking out. She's probably freaking out that I'm telling this story right now, but she's freaking out, and the whole time I'm holding on to her, I'm like, hey, baby, it's okay. I'm with you. Daddy's with you. Don't worry. I'm not going to leave you. I'm right here with you, and she's freaking out. She's screaming, and, you know, and, and man, the ride's going, and, I, you know, to some extent, I'm having a blast, but I'm also trying to cover her, and, you know, and the whole time, man, she is so freaked out that she forgets that I'm right there with her, and I'm telling her, I'm right here, pumpkin. I'm, I'm right here with you. I'm not going anywhere. And you know what? That's where, that's how many of us are right now. Some of us are going through some hard times, difficult circumstances, and we're freaking out because these problems seem so, seem more real than the God of the universe who's trying to whisper to us and he's saying, hey, I'm right here with you. And friends, I want to remind you today, no matter how big your circumstance is, no matter how big your problem is, no matter what you're facing right now, during this Christmas season, I want you to know that God is speaking to you today and he's telling you, I'm right here with you. I'm holding on to you. I'll never leave you. God is with us. You know, the second thought about this idea of the incarnation is, is this, is that God was with us. God is with us and God was with us. You know, sometimes it's easier to see God in the rearview mirror of our lives rather than in the moment. You guys, you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, it's easier to see God in the rearview mirror of our lives than, than in the present moment. There's been several times as I've, as I've looked back on my own journey where I could see God's faithfulness, and I didn't realize that he was right there with me the whole time. You know, Joseph is somebody that we could look to who, who went through some difficult trials and circumstances. I mean, Joseph was, you know, he, he had a dream that one day he was going to be a ruler and his brothers were jealous of him. And so they end up beating him up. They decide to throw him in a pit. And then they decide, they're like, oh, you know what? Let's just sell him into slavery, which I guess they thought that was a better idea. I don't really know which is worse. But they sell him into slavery, and then he's sold into slavery, and, 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 and he's in a prison. And, and, uh, or what, before he's sold into slavery, he, he finally ends up, um, he, he end, he, he's in a prison. And then what takes place a couple years later is that he finally gets out of prison and then, he's, he, and then he's falsely accused and, and all this stuff. And Joseph goes through all these trials. But then we find in Genesis 39, 21, it says, But the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. And later on in his story, one day after God has redeemed his whole story, He's able to look at his brothers who sold him into slavery and tell, and tell them, hey, what you meant for evil, God turned it around for good. Joseph was able to look back on his life and see God's faithfulness and see that God was with him in the pit, in the prison, in the palace, wherever he was at, he's able to say, God was with me. And friends, I think many of us need to be reminded 
today that God was with us. As we look back on the rearview mirror of our lives, we can see God's faithfulness. We can see God being with us in difficult circumstances. You know, several years ago in my own life, I could, well, as I look back on my own life, I could see several different instances where God was faithful and was with me. And I didn't really notice it in that moment. I was like my daughter on that, on that ride, you know, crying out, like, God, where are you at? And God's like, I'm right here, I'm right here. But there's been several moments in my life where I realized that God was with me and that he's always been faithful. God was with me several years ago when I had, uh, I, I, we were, I was a youth pastor and, and we ended up leaving the church due to a couple different circumstances and this was several years ago and um, I didn't have another job lined up. And my wife was pregnant. We found out she was pregnant. And I remember freaking out like my daughter was on the, on the Tower of Terror. I remember freaking out like, oh, where are you at? you got to show up. And, and, and man, just a couple months later, man, God opened up this position at, at another church. I remember another opportunity came my way several years later. It was kind of like this dream ministry position. And, and man, my dreams and hopes were like, were answered. I, I thought to myself, like, this is the perfect opportunity. And, and everything looked great. And then all of a sudden, the door completely shut on us. And I remember thinking, God, where are you at? But little did I know that God was faithful in those moments, and, and thankfully he didn't allow us to go through that door because it, it would have probably ended up being a horrible situation for us. You know, God was with us in, in, in several many opportunities, and you know, I, I, as I think back, even, even during the seasons where I went through some hard times, difficult times, I look back and I'm like, and I see God's hand all over every step of the way. God has always been with us. I look back even a couple years ago, in 2007, the Christmas, uh, a couple days before Christmas in 2007, when my father-in-law suddenly passed away from a heart attack, had no prior health issues with his heart, and so it totally caught us by surprise. And I remember in those in that moment wondering where is God, but as we look back, we we see, and even though. His death still stings us even now. Several years later, we see that God was with us, comforting us. Man, I could go on and on of just God's faithfulness and, and, and just being with us in times when I thought maybe he wasn't there. And maybe, that, and maybe you can too if you were honest. You could look back at your life and your story and see God's faithfulness, that God was with you. God is with you with you. God was with you. And number three, here's another great promise of the incarnation is this, is that God will be with you. God will be with you. You know, imagine if Mary could have seen the future. Imagine it. Like God doesn't allow us to see the future. I wish he would. <laughs> it would make it so much easier but then we probably wouldn't trust him, right? But imagine if Mary could have seen the future, right? Just imagine Mary saying this. Like if she was able to look into the course of time and see the future, she, she would probably say something like this, man, God is going to be with me when all of a sudden I conceive a child by the Holy Spirit. God's going to be with me. And even though people are going to wonder where this baby came from, even though Joseph is going to be like, what happened here? I know that God's going to be with me. God's going to be with me when we have to travel hundreds of miles on a donkey. God's going to be with me when there's no room at an inn. God's going to be with me when I eventually give birth to the Son of God in a manger. God's going to be with me when we flee to Egypt uh, to protect our son. God's going to be with me when my son is 12 years old and, and we, we can't find him uh, and he's been lost and, and he was inside the, in the temple and we, we're, we, did, we had no idea, but God is going to be with me in that moment. God's going to be with me in the wedding feast when I watch my son turn water into the wine the very first time. God's going to be with me when I watch my son become falsely accused. 
God's going to be with me when I see him on trial and tortured, even though he's completely innocent. And God's going to be with me when I watch him nailed to the cross and give up his final breath. Friends, imagine if Mary could have saw all that. She would have been able to say, God is going to be with me. And friends, here's what I want you to understand. We, we can't see the future. We don't have the luxury of seeing into the future. But when we read these stories of God's faithfulness in people's lives who couldn't see the future, but we read what took place over the course of their own histories, we can see that God was with them. And how much more is God going to be with us even though we can't see into the future? We don't know what the future holds, but friends, we do know who holds the future. And the promise of the incarnation is that God is not only with us, was with us, but also will be with us forever, no matter what we go through. Paul says it like this in Romans chapter 8. He says, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us. Will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen to that, friends. Nothing will be able to separate us from him. That means if it's nothing, that means not sickness. That means not brokenness. That, that means not your failures, not your mistakes, not your divorce, not your hurt, your habits, your, your broken dreams, not your cancer. Nothing can separate you from the love of God, because why? God will be with you. God will be with you. Jesus declares in Revelations 1.8, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Friends, the one who is is the one who is with you. The one who was is the one who was with you. The one who is to come is the one who will be with you. Even though you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because your Lord God will be with you. That is the promise of the incarnation, that God is with us, that God was with us, and that God will be with us. And friends, that's our hope if we have Christ Jesus today. Nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing. That is what Christmas is all about. Emmanuel, God with us. He's with you, friends. But the question is, are you with him? Are you with him? See, if you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to understand something. God wants to be with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to be the center of your life, and, and, and he wants to be with you through hard times and difficult circumstances. But the reality of it is, is that there has been something that has separated you from him being completely with you, from you being completely with him, and that is what has devastated the world, which is known as sin. Sin has separated every single person that's ever been born into this world from a God who came to be with us. But the good news today and the promise of Christmas today is that God can be with you and you can be with God just by simply receiving Jesus into your life, realizing that the ultimate reason why he came was to be with us, was to pay the penalty for our sin so that we wouldn't have to pay the consequences. 
Jesus came to us because we couldn't come to him. And he died for us even though we deserve to die. He took the punishment for us even though we deserve the punishment because we've all stood guilty. God came to you because you couldn't get to him. And he paid the price for you today, friends. And all you have to do today in order to be with him, to have a relationship with him, in order for there to not be any separation for the rest of your life from a loving God is by simply inviting Jesus into your life. And I want to invite you to do that right now. I want to give you this moment, the day after Christmas. I want to give you this moment, this opportunity to be able to start 2022 off as a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. Or to actually end this year by starting off as a new creation in Christ Jesus and to begin with a new life in Christ going into the next year. It's just a matter of you right now, wherever you're at, whether you're watching online, watching on a device, maybe you're watching on demand some, some time later, a few years later, it doesn't matter. God's no respecter of time. And so right now, I want to invite you to receive Jesus into your life, and I'm going to ask you just to repeat this prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I know you came for me, and I receive your grace today. I believe you died for my sins and rose again. I receive you into my life. And from this day forward, I'll be with you forever. Amen and amen. Listen, if you just said that prayer, I want you to know something today. God is with you and God will always be with you. You are a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. You are forgiven. You have a new life. You've been born again. The Spirit of God is filling you up even right now. And you have freedom in Christ. And so the next step now is go and tell someone. Tell someone what God has done for you. Tell someone the meaning of Christmas, that God came to you and you are now with him. And we'd love to know your story today. We'd love to hear what God has done in your life. And if you'll do me a favor right now, I want you to text DP Connect to 94000. Let us know that you made that decision. Again, text DP Connect to 94000. That way we can send you a gift and we can celebrate with you with all that God has done in your life.